Okay. So today I had a customer uh, request a pretty simple welcome sign. So I thought, uh, why not make a quick little video? It's gonna be pretty easy, pretty basic, um, but hopefully gives you an idea of how you can design, you know, a simple sign using simple shapes. This will probably take like, ten minutes. Um, one thing I'm gonna do that I haven't done before, in case anybody is interested, is I'm just gonna trace some basic JPEGs uh, into a vector. So I've downloaded uh, these little curly cues. And these are actually free. You can get these as an EPS, uh, but I thought I'd do this step just in case um, somebody needs to see this. So for whatever reason, this is bringing in at 2,000 inches. I don't want that. Let's go 20. There we go. So there's our JPEG. I'm going to go up here to the bitmap to vector tool. Uh, make sure to create boundary. I'm going to reduce the colors. This is a pretty good JPEG. It's one color. I don't see a whole bunch of different uh, colorations. If this is a low quality JPEG, uh, you'd probably have a whole bunch of colors in there. You might have some more work to do, but this one's pretty good. So let's go reduce colors. We're going to go all the way down to two. Hit apply and create vector. Boom. There you go. That's it. So now have nice outlines around our JPEG. And that's all you need to do. I think I'm going to use uh, this one right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move these guys over here. So I don't need my bitmap anymore. So I'm going to go up here and just clear my bitmap. Oh. Push that around. Clear the bitmap. There we go. So. So the customer would like a oval, so we discussed a 12 inch by 8 inch oval, create. And what I'm going to do is I will just, this one is not working, uh, I'm going to put that in the center of my model, there, so that's the basic shape. So the way I like to approach these is I know the shape and I know what the sign's gonna say. So the sign's gonna say welcome, that's it. So let's go get that text. So obviously, tons of fonts. Uh, for simple stuff like this, where this is not a big budget job, I have a couple fallback fonts that I'd like to use. One of them being right here, engraver. It cuts well. It engraves well. Somebody obviously designed it. So the word is welcome. We're going to use all capital letters. And I will create that. So let us put this here. Obviously a little too big. Put T for transform. And we will reduce this to a more manageable size. Just going to eyeball this for now. Now, this is a shortcut for centering the model for whatever reason mine's not working. So there we go. That's our basic sign. So you could technically do this. That's fine. But I like to just spruce it up a little bit. Um, this sign will be painted, uh, actually stained with, and then paint mask applied. It will be cut out, and then everything else will be cut white. So <coughs> that's the plan for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add a simple border around this just to, to take up some of this empty space. So I'll select my vector, I'm going to offset it, and I'm going to pick half an inch offset inwards, uh, keep my vector, and there we go. So you can see that just adds a little bit. What I'll actually do again is I'll take this vector. There's two, two ways to approach this. 
My plan right now is to cut everything out of this with a V-bit. I'll probably use the same V-bit for everything. I'm gonna offset this an eighth of an inch inwards. Just gives you a visual idea of what what's gonna happen. So the next thing, like I said, I'm gonna use this curly Q. So the next thing we're gonna do is, I mean, I am gonna use this little curly Q thing, but I wanna do one more thing before we add that. I'm just gonna add a simple line. So we'll go 10 by an eighth of an inch. And I'm just going to place that right on top of the text here. That's a bit big. Change that. And we have another one. Let's copy and paste. Use our arrow key. Bring it straight down. And all this is doing is just filling in a little bit more of that empty oval space. I might just I'm not crazy about it. That's better. So now we'll take our curly cue and we'll break it down. So for me right now, when I look at this, I still think that uh, we do have a lot of space up top here. So I think I'm going to grab these three guys and just change the size. just kind of brings, fills in a little bit more of the empty space. And I would like to have one of these on the bottom as well. So we'll select everything and go over to the mirror tool. I will mirror it down. And I'll just use my arrow key, make sure it's in the exact same position, but just down a little bit more. And we'll go down. Let's see this. I don't know what these are. Don't want that. That's it. There is our sign. So that is it. So let's um, let's just run the tool pass, and uh, you'll get a, a look, an idea of what the what the sign's gonna look like. I'm probably not gonna cut this out and video me cutting it out. I think it's pretty straightforward. So this is going to be three quarter of an inch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I will do a profile cut for my material. Quarter inch bit. Let's call this cut. And like I said before, I'm probably I think I'm going to use the same bit for everything in the interior. Um, sometimes I like to break my tool pass down, uh, but we will try this. Technically, this should work. Uh, I break them down into individual groups just in case I want to go back after and change one aspect rather than change everything. But uh, for the sake of the video, we'll just do it. So we've selected all our interior toolpath a bit. Now I'm going to use a 60 degree. Calculate that. And that's it. So I okay, so let's go ahead and simulate our toolpath. It's always a good idea to simulate your toolpath. There we go. Yeah, let's just delete our waste material. So 
So what I normally like to do is I'll actually, uh, I'll send the customer a screenshot of this and it just gives them a better idea of what it'll look like. Now, one thing, if you don't know, the default simulation for this is gray. If you go up here to edit and 3D graphic options, you can change your material to a whole bunch of supplied uh, textures and colors. So it kind of gives you a better idea of what you're looking at. Mm. There's a whole bunch of different settings in here you can play with. So I normally, I mean I cut a lot of wood, so I normally stick with a wood. There, and that's it. So, yeah, I hope that helps. They're uh, pretty quick and easy, and uh, you know, it just takes a little bit of time, but that literally took about seven minutes. So for anyone that doesn't have Carve Coat, I'm actually, uh, I'm gonna put a copy of this file on, uh, on my Etsy page. I'll have a link down below. Um, but yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty simple to make. All right, thanks a lot.